This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. This replaces the Wacom Cintiq Companion 2 that we reviewed, and boy, are there a lot of improvements here. Uh, unfortunately, the price hasn't gotten any lower. This is still a pretty expensive product here, but also new is the fact that, well, there's this 13.3 inch that we have here, and there's also what they call the 16, which is actually 15.6 inches, which is the size of a usual 15 inch laptop display. I wish we had that one here too for you, but right now we just have the 13.3 inch model. A lot of improvements include, my God, this one is so much quieter. You don't hear the fan constantly like the old Companion 2. You have dual band Wi Fi 802.11ac. It was just a travesty that the last one was 2.4 gigahertz only. You have Intel Iris 550 graphics. The performance difference when doing drawing and artwork is really noticeable here. A lot of other stuff. We're going to look at it now. So first off, let's show the differences between the old, this is the old Companion 2 right here, and the new Mobile Studio Pro. Both of these are the 13-inch class machines. You can see the difference in the display. Uh, the old one, you know, I really wanted to love it because the drawing experience was so nice, but one of the things I didn't like was the milkiness of the display. Not very bright either, and the color gamut was okay, but not exceptional. On the new one, you can see that milkiness is gone because they've switched to using an etched glass, which is much nicer than having a a kind of permanent screen protector overlay built in to give it a matte finish. It still feels really nice though when you're drawing on it. Well, we'll talk about the drawing experience later on them. So you can see the, the color gamut, obviously more saturation, higher color gamut, better display. Also, thinner bezels on the top and bottom. Now with something like this, you really don't want to have no bezels because this is something that you might be handling and holding. This isn't going for being the prettiest, most bezel bezel-less thing you've ever seen. It's about ergonomics. So you're going to have some bezels still here and we have our room for our express keys still. So you got the center key right here on the 512 gig SSD option model. Why they're tying this to the SSD capacity, I don't know. This is also a fingerprint scanner. works with Windows Hello for login and it works really well, by the way. So you still have your express keys here on the 13 inch, six total and this scroll wheel that you can use for zooming and, and scrolling, that sort of thing. It's the center bu button functions as the Windows launch key. If you go for the 16 inch model, there are eight express keys. These things are just so handy. They're invaluable. They're, you can assign your undo, your eyedropper, whatever it is you want to assign to those buttons. It just makes things more expedient. Of course, there's also an on-screen overlay you can use as well for some of your shortcuts when you're doing artwork. It's also gotten a little bit lighter too, a little bit, less bulky, all in all good. And on the back side, it's all black now instead of the silver look. So there's the back side, albeit upside down at the moment. So a little bit nicer and cleaner look than the silvery thing here. They're, they're both built like tanks. They're both heavy, durable kind of products, that's for sure. But I think the black is a little bit more tasteful. And on the back, you have an eight megapixel Intel RealSense 3D camera. So if those of you who are gonna be using these for 3D modeling, you can actually take a picture of an object and then use that and go to town with it in ZBrush or whatever 3D application you're going to use. It works okay. I'm not a big 3D design person, so I'm not the expert on that, but it seems to be usable. And there's a fun 5 megapixel camera as well on the new model. So the Mobile Studio Pro for the 13-inch model starts at $1,500. That's a Core i5 with 8 gigs of RAM and a 64 gig SSD, excuse me. It's not really the one you want. We have the top of line model here. This is certainly lovely. It's $2,500 though. This gets you a Core i7 and 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD. And of course the fingerprint scanner built in. So these are still not inexpensive products. The 16 inch model, it is around $23.99 to $25.99, depending on the configuration. Those are Core i7s with NVIDIA Quadro M1000M, low-end dedicated graphics. So anyway, keyboard not included in the box. The same Wacom keyboard is still available if you want to buy it. It's Bluetooth. You know, you can use whatever Bluetooth keyboard you want. If you already have one from a previous Wacom or anything else, I like Logitech keyboards a lot. It's a fine keyboard and it's compact. It gets the job done, it's particularly if you're just going to use this for keyboard shortcuts and that sort of thing. It's actually even not bad for typing on. The stand used to be included in the box. I was never a fan of this stand. I mean, I, it kind of got the job done, but these pieces of plastic here never inspired confidence and it had the the kind of metal here. Well, the new stand isn't available yet. Wacom told me it's going to be about two more months, but it's going to be all metal at least, but no more stand in the box. At that price, I'm kind of, well, gee, that's a shame. Here's the new Pro Pen 2 that's included. It looks a lot like, well, the original Pro Pen. 
But they said that they have done engineering work inside the pen. New C-switch, that sort of thing, helps to give you over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity, which is mind-boggling, isn't it? I mean, it's probably more than we could ever understand or make use of, practically speaking. But one thing it allows for is an incredibly light initial activation force. I mean, I already have a light touch, and I actually had to tone it down a little bit because you just barely start touching, and it starts making a line, which is pretty neat. I'll never complain about that. Still has two buttons over here, still too easy to press, really soft. It's funny, Surface Pro buttons, they're too hard to press. These are, I'm always accidentally squeezing them. I appreciate having buttons, wish it was a little bit more difficult. Eraser on the end here, and they give you a new, it's either, it's like a cigar tube or a tampon holder, depending on your gender and your habits holder instead of the old eyeglass style case. I think a lot of people seem to like the eyeglass case more. So the pen actually gets inserted in here and there's a place for the nibs too. So they give you two more of the harder plastic nibs and one of the softer felty tibs nibs. Now the, the, the resistance of this etched glass is so nice with the regular black tip. I actually haven't switched to the softer tip. Usually I would, so that, that's pretty neat stuff. And this is how the pen goes in. You just slide this open. So the old eyeglass case, I would take some more room maybe, but it's a little classier looking. That's the old Pro Pen right in there, so you can see how it looks. And you got more nibs in the case. So ports, certainly there's a change here. We have three USB-C ports on the side. Uh, you can charge with any one of those. It comes with a USB-C 100 watt charger. And if you want to use this as a Wacom Cintiq for your Windows desktop PC or your Mac, you know, plug it in and draw on it. You can do that, but you should use only the middle one for some reason. I don't know why that is. And yes, you can use just a straight USB-C to USB-C cable if you have a relatively new computer that has a USB-C port. So that's kind of cool. Otherwise, you have to buy the Wacom Link connector with a little plastic box that adapts and connects it. So you can use this as a drawing tablet. Uh, given the fact that this is a full computer unto itself, maybe you don't want to do that. But for Mac people, probably it, it could be a boon. So if you feel like switching back to Mac OS for doing some of your work. The Kensington Lock Slug. Well, that doubles as a pen holder. They give this little plastic pen holder. So the pen shoot, sticks straight up if you have it kind of flat on the desk. Obviously, if you're holding the tablet upright, it would fall out. There is no USB-C to USB-A adapter in the box. So if you need that, go to the store and buy one yourself. It's, I think it would have been nice if they included that in the box, honestly, for the price here. The other side has a full-size SD card slot, a headphone jack so you can listen to your tunes while you're doing artwork, volume control buttons, the usual rotation lock, and the power slider switch. What's really noticeable here is how phenomenally silent this is now. Maybe the 16-inch model with dedicated graphics gets noisier, but yes, this has fans inside, but I hardly ever hear them, whereas the Companion 2 was just constantly making noise. The fans were just kind of annoying on it. So they have done a great job with the cooling here. And this antique Companion 2 had Intel Broadwell 5th generation CPU, so it wasn't that old or behind the times. Now inside you have the tweener CPU, which isn't a bad thing. It sits between the 15 watt typical Ultrabook CPU that's used in something like Microsoft Surface Pro 4 and Surface Book and quad core CPUs used in gaming laptops and mobile workstations. This is the 28 watt CPU that, that Apple's used in their higher end 13 inch MacBook Pro traditionally. But you get Intel Iris 550 graphics here and that's pretty good because that's about as fast as the NVIDIA 940M. It's enough to give you a little extra punch in Photoshop, even a little help in Premiere. And it's similar to the original performance base for the Surface Book in terms of the oomph. And you can see the benchmark numbers to show that. So we have the Core i7 model. That's the i7-6567U, 3 3.3 gigahertz CPU. Again, 16 gigs of RAM. Obviously, this is a, a sealed design tablet, so you're not going to be upgrading the RAM. The SSD speeds in this, oh, not really anything impressive. Not like PCIe speeds, not NVMe, but decent, tolerable. And you can get anywhere from 64 gigs all the way up to 512 gigs of storage if you need if you need additional storage, well, there's SD cards and there are external hard drives. That's about it. But, you know, considering that we have 512 gigs of storage inside of this, I'm not exactly hurting. So one of the things 
that bothered me previously with Wacom EMR digitizers, the traditional electromagnetic digitizer, where the actual digitizer is the active part. That is, it has the slight bit of current. There is no battery in the pen like there is with, say, an entry pen on Surface Pro 4 or Wacom's AES solutions that are used on Lenovo ThinkPad Yogas. The, the problem was the parallax because the the glass was pretty high up above the display of the digitizer. Well, then now they're using that zero air gap design. So there is really no parallax discernible anymore. What a huge change. It was, like I said, the one thing I just started driving me crazy that the pen tip was never where my nib was, according to what I saw on the screen. So finally that problem's gone. Now, one thing though, if you have, if you're somebody who actually has a hard touch and you're pressing hard with the pen on the screen, you'll see a little bit of visual distortion. And that's typical of anything that does have a very thin to no air gap on the screen. Most laptops, if you, if you poke them, for example, or Surface Pro 4 for tablets, you'll see a little bit of visual distortion there. That's, it's okay, but that's the price you're going to pay. I think most people would rather have no parallax. Wacom said they tweaked the existing digitizer that's on the device, but I don't, it doesn't sound like there were any major changes there. Really, the, the drop in the air gap and the new pen with the new C switch, as they say, inside make the big difference and give you the 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity. Now, Wacom EMR was always very precise and very good at tracking the pen, but now it's just pretty amazing to draw with. Honestly, it's about as close as I've ever felt to actually drawing with pen on paper. It is good. Now, the iPad Pro is also very good, and it too, like this, has tilt sensing. So you can actually tilt to shade, which is a very natural thing. If you're doing brush strokes, you can affect a different kind of brush stroke by tilting. But this one still has one advantage. If you need your usual Windows apps, if you need Photoshop, if you need Corel Paint, or if you need Clip Studio Paint, aka Manga Studio, all of those programs are available to you here. With the iPad Pro, you have one really good program, which is Procreate. And it is a great program, but that's the only one. And you have all the file management issues with getting your stuff on and off of an iPad. So different kind of experience in terms of workflow there. But when it comes to pens, I would still say that the iPad Pro is right up there with, with this. Now the display, as I said, is really improved. And you can notice the difference in the richer color gamut. And the, the, it doesn't look milky anymore. It, it's actually really nice looking. It's still a matte display, so it's not going to have that glossy wow factor of some more consumer-oriented products. But I think most people who are doing artwork really don't want to deal with the glare, so that's OK. And, and it no longer looks like that grainy, icky mess. It's not, still not the brightest display. Wacom claims it's 253 nits. We measured it at 243 nits. It's fine for indoor use. And again, you're not going to be combating glare, but still, it would be neat if it was even brighter. And here's the price you pay for that zero air gap, more kind of laptop, consumer tablet sort of design there. We, that uh, introduces the possibility of a little bit of light bleed. And we see just a little bit on two edges of this. Nothing bad. It's not like your you know, gaming laptops, which tend to have really lots of light bleed on them. But there's a little bit there. Now, they claim 94% of Adobe RGB and, of course, full sRGB. We got almost that. We measured 90%, which is still among the best out there. And for those of you who are working for print, you actually need that wide color gamut. That's a wonderful thing. Calibration was only slightly off. Things were a little too cool. I would have liked to have seen it perfectly calibrated, but I think most people who are using this for a fairly professional use and need it to be spot on are going to calibrate anyway, and it wasn't that far off. Gamma a little high at 2.4 and 7200 Kelvin. So again, that's a little bit high as well, but calibration fixes it. Black level is 0 0.37, which is like the better consumer displays out there, and contrast is 800 to 1. So it's a very good display. It may not be the very best display ever, but it is leaps and bounds over the previous generation and quite easy on the eyes. So battery life, uh, <laughs> nah, it's not really very good. Nah. They, they claim six hours for the 52 watt hour battery here. I've been averaging about four hours. That's what brightness set to 40% and doing sketching in a variety of programs, including Photoshop, which is you know fairly demanding with several layers going back and forth with Corel Painter 2017, also fairly demanding. So about four hours there. Comes with a 100 watt power brick, kind of on the big side, actually, I suspect, because it probably also works for the more power hungry 16 inch model. 
and it takes about two hours to charge it completely. Honestly, most of the time when I don't need to actually take it away, and use, if I'm sitting on the couch and sketching at night or something like that, or for those of you who are going to be working in your studio part of the time with this, I just leave it plugged in as much as possible because four hours ain't that great. So that's the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro 13. It's a heck of a lot of drawing goodness in a three pound chassis. Obviously competition exists. This is really still close to what you would call a vertical market product. This is for artists who are gonna use this pretty seriously for art. If you're a hobby artist, if you're a professional artist, that sort of thing. It really doesn't try to compete with something like Surface Book or Surface Pro 4, though obviously some of you will choose those instead, particularly Surface Pro 4 because it's less expensive. You've seen the differences right now, what you get here, what you give up here as well, and hopefully you can make an informed decision now as to whether this will be your next drawing companion. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this review. And oh hey, if you want a smackdown between this and the Surface Pro 4, just let me know in the comments.